Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, but I want to point out something. Pay attention to how um, these some of these bank coin companies have been making themselves an integral part of the financial systems around the world. I mean, how long before they get the full green light? Now, you look at what Ripple and SBI are doing in Japan. You have that where SBI already claims that some of their clients are holding XRP. I don't know how much. I would love to know that. But they're trying to make things even better for their clients who are holding XRP within Japan's uh, uh, financial system. OK, so we have that. Then you look at the CBDC platform that Ripple built in for Hong Kong or alongside the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Now, they have a wholesale side to that retail side to that. We haven't even begun to see the results of that as of yet when it's fully deployed and, and everything is running off of that. Then on top of that, I keep in mind China's connection to massive real world assets. You know, when you th when I think about China, I think my mind goes first to all the mining that they do in Africa, right? A lot of commodities there. They have their hands in a lot of commodities that can be tokenized that I believe the value will be tokenized. And now, Let's never forget how good it is to tokenize something and have it tracked on chain as it's moving from here to there. You know, things like copper. You saw what copper did recently. Copper went insane recently. Now, copper, platinum, things like that. Sure, great money makers at times. And also, well, recently, and also uh, it's a pretty good store of values at certain times, depending on when you get in. But at the same time, they're... They have great utility. Copper's used in a lot of different um, semiconductor chips, I believe. Um, a lot of the things that have to do with solar power as well. Same thing for platinum also. Platinum is, is very integral to a lot of these electric vehicles that are out here now. So now, with that, you're going to have to have that transported back and forth. So now, you need something, you need a system to where everything can be tracked. That's where blockchain comes in because there's a lot of theft that goes on. So you want to know, okay, it left this warehouse. It's in transit. It's, it's being scanned along the way. And on an immutable ledger, you, now we all know where it is. It got here at this time. Same thing with oil, et cetera, right? Now, I take that from largely from what VeChain is doing, but VeChain can do it all. But you already know I'm super bullish on VeChain, but VeChain can do it all. This is why if you pay close attention and I'll, I'll circle back around, you look at how a lot of these blockchains now, the top ones, the top utility coins, a lot of them work together. They're coming together. If you didn't see that last members only video, please go watch it. Please go watch it. But they're all coming together. The question people have to ask is why? Something big is coming. Now, everything that's good takes some time. That's just the way that it is. Everything that's big, major, life-changing, era-changing takes time. That's just the way that it is. But they're all coming together. Now, I'm, I'm just going to point out the obvious. You look at quant. Let's, another one that's weaving its way. It's making itself a mainstay in the financial systems of the UK. I just don't see any way around that it not being huge in the future. I, they're working with the Bank of England. They're working with a lot of different companies over there. They have these systems like Project Agora. They're working on with the Bank for International Settlements. But when you look at Quant, it has overledger for what? It has overledger for XRP. So you have Ripple already has interoperability. Then RippleNet brings a bunch of banks to the table. But then Quant has a connection to XRP. But then the interoperability doesn't stop there because then XRP and Ripple have a connection to Flare, right? And then Flare brings their oracles and FT, so and all that kind of stuff there and smart contracts. They bring a certain level of interoperability and they're going to bring AI. So now you have Quant connected to XRP. XRP is Ripple's main. That's, that's their best thing. Then you have Flare connected to XRP and Ripple. But then you have Ripple Coming together, you know, uh, come, trying to get on the same page with companies like Hedera. You see another bank coin company. You see how they're all coming together. They're creating, a, in my humble opinion, I could be completely wrong. They're creating a mega system. But why? 
Why? This is what people have to start, you know, putting their mind to. So to bring the other side in as I'm watching that. And it's building and building. And that just makes me super bullish. I don't control what other people feel out there. I'm just telling you what I think and what I see. And what I see on the horizon is something insanely uh, powerful. And I think that's why what I'm about to unveil next. I think that's why uh, uh, Brad Garlinghouse said so confidently. Hey, you know, uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but you saw the interview recently. It went viral. He said, Confidently, oh, you know, getting to those trillions will be easy. How can you how can you say such a thing unless you know you have an advantage, unless you know the other system is so bad that that money is for the taking. It's for the taking. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Now, what have we been covering for two years? You look at the legacy system. The legacy system is not a joke when I make videos. I'm very serious. Their system is in bad shape. Their customers are leaving and they're trying to figure out how to bring them back in. Not only that, they have leaks in their system all over the place. They're a lot of their employees, not not everyone, but this is from articles we cover. Some of their employees are stealing from customers. That's rubbing a lot of people the wrong way from what I'm reading. Some of their executives have been involved in stealing. This is from some of the top banks from st- for uh, involved with stealing from the customers. That's rubbing the customers the wrong way. A lot of people have been reporting on the buy-in clauses in there. If something happens to the banks, they can't get bailed out. They take your money. That's rubbing a lot of the customers the wrong way. There's been a lot of people educating the larger masses of society on how your money goes to die in savings accounts and that there's things better. Better than a savings account, including CDs, uh, CD accounts, money market funds, crypto, sometimes commodity. If you're just looking for purely protective, p- protective uh, 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 means to hold your value, there's all types of good things out there and people begin educated. So they've been leaving because of that that's been rubbing them the right way as the banks rub them the wrong way. They have so many problems. Then on top of that. Let's keep in mind, I don't know if we're getting to the articles. If not, this will be just a different type of video, but I think this is important. If then on top of that, ha- we've been reporting on this for a while here, but have you been keeping up with all of the data breaches? Their system is so leaky that uh, they've been getting hacked left and right. And it's not just the banks, but the banks primarily, where people's social security accounts, their bank accounts are getting drained. That's been rubbing the people the wrong way. And this is getting reported now by mainstream media. So more and more people are hearing about this. Right. So now if you're a part of the new financial system. And you have the knowledge that, wait a minute. Ripple might be done with this SEC case very soon. And if they get clarity, we're all the ones that are coming together. That is we're all going to use what they built or what they use to beat the SEC, we're going to use that same thing and, and, and it'll pretty much guarantee us a victory or maybe the SEC won't even be able to use that against us. It makes their their cases, their fights a little bit weaker. You know what I mean? Like, so it brings clarity if Ripple gets past that. So now, if you can do that, now there's a window that opens up for you to dominate and capitalize on where the banking system is going wrong. I think there's a lot that they have that they're not saying a lot of the different offerings they have that they're not speaking about right now because they don't want to give their enemy an advantage. There's no reason to come out right now while the case is going on and while the SEC still has some fight in them and say, hey, we're going to do this so that the SEC can come against you. And I'll use an example of something like that, which is the stable coin. You see how Ripple just came out and said, we're going to come out with a stable coin. And before it, it could even come out, before it could even drop, the SEC is already like, that's an unregistered security. That's why you don't tell your plans to the enemy before you do it. You just do it. Just do it. Don't give your enemy time to plan. But I think that was a test just to see. I do. I think they have a, not just Ripple. I think Ripple. Flair and I, I'm I'm going by listening to how they speak. They all seem to have something that that uh 
It's like they're excited. It's like they want to say something more, but they're not. Stellar is the same way. Like they have things they're holding back, partnerships they're holding back. They just don't want to say it. And you can tell because they all kind of hint at, oh, something big is coming. We have something big coming. They all hint at that. And then there's no pop, there's no way that I'm going to reasonable, reasonably believe that they're working with all these companies and the projects that they're working on are all that they have when they've made advancements in other areas that uh, uh, where it indicates to me much more could be done. I believe it has been done. It just hasn't been announced. I'll give you an example. You look at Quant. When was it? Like a la uh, last year, maybe a year and a half ago when they talked about Quant gateways and which was pretty much it was something akin to staking. They didn't come out with that just yet. Not just yet. I think they're holding that back. See, things like that. They can do that easily. And But see, with that, if they did something like that, it would skyrocket the price of Quan. And for whatever reason, I don't think they want that just yet. Not yet. Because if you look at like the wallet activity, there's some strange wallet activity going on. Who's accumulating all this Quan? While the regular people are selling, who's accumulating all this Quan? Who is it that's doing that? Right. There's some strange stuff happening with flair as all the retail is selling. Some people know. I think they're holding something, but I think all these companies know. There's a moment coming where they where they will become a very important layer to the existing financial system. And there's no way around it. No way around it. Now, another thing I want to take into account, I want to put on the table. Now, if you pay attention to how some of these systems have been attacked, when they've been attacked, they've shut down their entire systems. Now, this happened recently. To, I can't remember which institution it was. It was, it was within the last three months. There was an attack that happened and they had to shut everything down. Some of you know who it is. My apologies. I just can't remember off the top of my head. They shut everything down. I don't think they want that ever again. I think when they integrate with blockchain, because you know how blockchain works, one piece of it goes down. The rest of it keeps running like nothing happened. That's more important to legacy financial institutions than it is to, I think, regular people. Although there's a duality here, I think, that we're going to see in the future. I think regular people pretty much will have the opportunity to be their own banks, which, of course, they do have it now. But I'm talking about at a time where things are much more streamlined much more streamlined one. And uh, I think that banks will offer that to people. And then you know how they do. Let's not be, let's be serious here. They probably will add some fees. They're going to make money off this stuff and money off of offering staking and lending and all of this stuff through their wallets, through their system. So there will be that. But at the same time, so there's that duality there. It will still offer people the ability to become their own banks, sort of, through the legacy system, sort of, while the legacy system brings in all that capital. But it's not just them, is it? No, that benefits the blockchain. See, when once the, the new financial system congeals with the legacy system fully and they're unleashed, it's going to bring tons of capital in. At that point, at that point, and I think this is another reason why a lot of those Legacy system entities are tr they're, right now. They're still getting in position. But I think that's one of the reasons why, because once that happens, you can't turn that faucet back off. You can't. Once you let the mainstream retail investors that are not involved in crypto in, you can't get them back out. You can't get the prices back down. You can't. Once those prices go up, that's it. That's it, folks. It's as simple as that. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking, what's on my mind. All right. You can't turn that faucet back off. Crypto right now is in its infancy still. It doesn't matter how long it's been out or how long people have been holding. It doesn't change the truth. All the experts and pros say it's still in its infancy. And I agree with that because the big money hasn't come in yet. Now, that's where utility coins come in. Now, I believe firmly utility coins have been kept quiet on purpose. 
in a multitude of ways. I'm not just talking about because of the court case. Listen, their media keeps it quiet. Um, their banking system is keeping it really, really quiet. They don't tell the regular people what they're building, building. They don't want them bullish. They don't say, hey, hey, we're building with blockchain. They don't want them bullish. They don't say, hey, we're working with Algorand. Hey, we're working with Ripple. Hey, hey, we're working with Quant. No, they don't want them bullish. They don't want them peeping and seeing what's going on because then they might get in and then to drive them prices up. Now, while money is nothing to these people, of course, they're not ignorant either. If they can get something cheaper, they will. They will. See, a lot of the old money is not, they're not enamored of superficiality like new money is. Like new money wants a Lambo. New money wants a, a, a mansion. Old money doesn't care. It already had that long ago. The luster of that wore off a long time ago. So if they can get something cheap, they will. They will drive in a, a used car. They, uh, they will dress regular. They're all about generational wealth for real, like keeping the wealth, not spending it and giving it back. They're about keeping it. So if they can get something cheaper, they will. It's all about the deal. Let's make a deal. It's all about that with them. So they would rather get it for a low, even though they could buy it high. But no, why do that? That's not good business. You buy it low. So the mainstream media doesn't talk about it. Their legacy system doesn't talk about about these projects. I and and. Just pay attention through all of the bad stuff that's going on. All of these bank coin heads seem very happy. Uh, Gilbert Verdian seems very excited, very happy. Uh, Hugo Fillion of Flair, the Gilbert Verdian is of Quant. Hugo Fillion of Flair, very excited, very happy. Brad Garlinghouse, despite everything going on and even him admitting that he had a little bit of a depression spout and, you know, things like that, d uh, sort of, I'm paraphrasing, of course, um, when they got sued and all of that type of stuff there, still very upbeat, very excited. There's something happening. They continue to expand around the world. No, no matter. <laughs> it's so interesting what's happening. Um I'm trying to think of other things that were on top of my head. So, so you're looking at every every possible thing moving across what in the future? Which chains? You're going to have some legacy system offerings, but you're going to have bank coin offerings will probably be the majority of what's moving things around. So you'll have a little bit of both. All right. I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. But. When you have everything tokenized and all of that value moving across some sort of mega system, the new financial system, XRPL, Quant, Stellar, Algorand, Flare, when they become one for real and you don't know, not you, you probably will know, but the regular citizen, the regular investor, the regular user of those technologies doesn't even know what the native protocol is, they just use it. What will the value of those things be? Because it seems like that's where everything is heading. And it doesn't seem like there's any way around that. You look at how um, Franklin Templeton even recently, or was it Franklin Templeton recently, or was it Wisdom Tree, was praising Stellar. I didn't even cover that article. I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I have so many articles up sometimes, I don't get to them all. My apologies. It's not because I don't want to. I just I just forgot. But that was major. They were they there was an article or, or two written recently. And, and they were saying, oh, Stellar is so great. It's so awesome. If they're saying that in an article, what are they saying to their their partners and their peers? They're telling them, hey, if you need a blockchain, in my humble opinion, this is what would happen. They're saying they would say, hey, if you need a blockchain. You Stellar. So then that makes me question, wait a minute. Stellar doesn't do bad business. They do good business. But if that's the case, what partnerships are they hiding? I think a lot of them are hiding. And I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, folks. I don't think that I am. I don't think that I am. Where's those announcements that, that Stellar was talking about? There was somebody from Stellar. This was a couple months ago. And they were talking about some big announcements coming. And it wasn't about smart contracts. This was after that. What was that they were talking about? I think a lot of these blockchains are holding back massive announcements. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to compare something here. I think what they do is they say nothing. They don't want to say anything. 
They just hold it back. As opposed to, let's say, someone like Flair. Now, Flair will say something like, you know, we're coming out with F assets, and but they gotta give you, they have to give you updates. They're excited about it, right? So they'll, even though maybe they have to do more testing, right? They'll push it back. So the, the people are a little bit upset. Oh, they got to push it back, but it's like they have to make sure it's good before they release it. Now, because they're excited, they'll continue to talk about things they want to do. Oh, we're coming out with something. We're doing something with AI. I think that's opposite to a lot of these other blockchains. They're also working on things. They also have projects. They also have partnerships they want to announce. They're just not doing it. Right. They're just not doing it. I was looking on um, the delegation list, right? And I noticed there's some unnamed. Am I am I looking at that wrong? There's like names of, of, of companies you can delegate to. You could delegate your songbird and get some yield. You can delegate your flair and get some yield. But I was looking down the list and there's a lot of them that are named. And then there's some with no name. Who are they? Who's this? <laughs> Who is that? Am I looking at that wrong? Is there a reason why some of them are unnamed? Why would they want to be unnamed? I don't know. It just stands out to me. I could be maybe it's nothing. Maybe that's nothing at all. And I'm just looking at it the wrong way. I, I would consider that possibility. But I'm saying I think that there's a lot of major things going on and there's a lot of distraction going on right now. And I also think that there's a concerted effort to divert people's attention to other stuff. Now, I want to end off with this. There's been a huge cash pile building on the side. We've talked about it many times. So it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I'm not the only one that speaks about that. Actually, there was a few billionaires that came out throughout 2023, just a few times. We read the articles here. And they were talking about, hey, we, this is what they say. I'm paraphrasing, but you saw the articles. They said, we're putting cash on the side, but they never said why. Well, well, they hinted, oh, well, the dollar, the U.S. dollar. That, no, no, no. Stop. You're not putting cash on the side just because of the U.S. dollar and, and you know, uh, um, you want to reinvest, to you know, to protect yourself. No, no, I don't believe that. Mm mm. Because mm -hmm, you have it, that cash on the side has it, uh, 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 it hasn't moved as of yet. Although, yeah, sure, money market funds, I get it. Money market funds, no problem. But then all the experts were saying what? They were saying that that cash on the side was going to go into stocks. That was last year at the beginning of last year. And that cash pile on the side has not budged yet. Albeit, a lot of people do say that there's a bubble. But <laughs> you see how a lot of um, a lot of these millionaires and billionaires super bullish on Bitcoin. OK, OK, super bullish on Bitcoin. They've been getting into Bitcoin, but the cash pile hasn't moved into Bitcoin. OK, interesting. You think they don't know about a lot of these utility coins? But they're not ready to unleash that. I, I think they're not ready to unleash that cash pile just yet. They, I, need, I think there needs to be clarity first. They're looking for clarity first before unleashing that cash pile. If they were going to do it in the stock market, they would have done it already. If there's a true bubble, you do that before, boom, it pops. Or I guess you could do it after it pops. But then who knows how long, if it does, if, a, if, a, if there is a bubble, if that's real and you don't know how long things are going to stay down. I don't think it's for, I don't think it's for that. They would have done it last year and made a ton of gains with that cash pile. But no, they haven't. So you think they don't know about Solana? Chainlink? You think they didn't hear about the Swift uh, a deal with Chainlink? I'm pretty sure any high, any high value person has advisors. Financial advice, good ones who are paid well to do their job. And they're going to tell you, hey, listen, we, we see this going on here. Some bullish stuff going on with these companies in the future. The high value people and their advisors know the companies that are going to be major in the future. If you're working with Swift, you're major. 
If you're getting praised by a uh, 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 trillion dollar asset managers like Solana is. They know about you. But why hasn't that money moved yet? Because they're waiting on clarity. But that's not to say it can't move into that in the future. I think that's what they're waiting on. I think they're waiting on clarity. There's a moment. And I hate to use this, this verbiage, but I like it at the same time. I hate it because a lot of people give you a hard time for using this verbiage as though they're looking very shallow at the verbiage. But it's expedient to use such. I think that there is a flip the switch moment. And it doesn't mean things happen instantly. That's not how I think people should take it. I think it's a, it's a changing of the guard. Flip of the switch represents a changing of the guard. I think that's what's coming in the future. Look at everything is changing, folks. The way people think is changing. The way that they're behaving is changing. The, new, the financial systems are changing. Everything is changing. It's in, a, it's in a change of seasons. Like the old stuff is breaking down and there's something new being born. In a lot of different ways, the new financial system or the financial system is nothing different. So, yes, I, I'm one, I believe they know about XRP. I think this is why a lot of people that are big money people. They try to steer people away from XRP. To be real, and it's not just XRP. I'm just taking XRP, using XRP as an, as an example. I think two, one. I think two things. One is why they try to steer people away from these utility coins. One, two. They deliberately try to make them boring by not pouring big money into them deliberately. Although they're money makers and super bullish, they're wearing the people out. They're conditioning the minds of the people, and they have the time to do it. They have the time. They're conditioning the minds of the people. You can see it all in different comment sections. Oh, is this ever going to go past 60 cents? You know, oh man, this is a stable coin. The conditioning is already setting in. So when the time comes and these things pop, they will never see it coming. Conditioning too. Um, There was something else I was going to say. I can't even remember it, but I think a lot of things are happening. Not, everything happens for a reason. But a lot of people, they fail to ask why. They don't look for the cause. So we didn't get to the articles today, but I think that sharing my thoughts, it felt much better. It felt much better to do such. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with that? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.